Okay, for the sake of time, I'm probably going to do a little less solving and just a little more setup so that it's helpful but doesn't waste your entire period. Anyways, next question, we have a skier on a slope and you got to figure something else. So, um, specifically, I have um, a 75-kilogram uh, skier. So, that's 75 kilograms and that's the mass of the skier. Then uh, I have a slope, so I'm going to draw this out on this slope. It's probably not to scale in any way, it just helps me here. Uh, so here's my 75 kilogram skier. I know he looks a little bit boxy, but that's just the way he is. Um, and on that slope is, the incline is 35 degrees. So I'm going to write 35 in here. And that is the angle that I've drawn, and this is supposed to be a right angle triangle. Okay, so that's the setup. And then it says, um, what is the coefficient of static friction uh, for this if, according to this setup, the skier with no push or anything is just about to start down. So it's right at that point where the force of gravity acting in line or parallel to the surface will be balanced uh, to the force of friction. It's right at that magical moment where we just start to begin. So as you've always seen me done here, the first thing to do is to draw out how gravity is acting on this. So the first one is just the force of gravity or FG and it acts straight down. Okay, and then we have the other components of gravity that we're going to work out and make a right angle triangle. So we've got the one that's perpendicular with the surface here. That'll be the force of gravity perpendicular. And then there's the one that's parallel to the hill, and that's the force of gravity parallel. Okay, so going back in here, we're going to try to find force of gravity. That should be a very simple, well done um, calculation, just the mass of the skier times gravity, so that's 75 multiplied by 9.81, um, 9.81, okay, and that should be, I should have had that worked out somewhere, uh, 735, 735.75, 75 newtons, so I've kept the color scheme so you get it. Okay, now, um, I need to figure out the rest of this triangle. Well, you know, this angle is the same 35 that comes there, and this is a right angle triangle. So really what we have here is this is the hypotenuse, uh, this is the adjacent, and this is the opposite. Okay, so once more we can use Sokotoa to find any part of this that we want. Um, will need it all. So in this case, uh, the blue here represents the force of gravity perpendicular, so we use that upside down T, and it will be the, because uh, it's adjacent, it'll be the cosine of the angle multiplied by the hypotenuse to give us the adjacent side. Um, so that will be, uh, I'm sure I have it, uh, 602, Okay, so it works out to 602.69 newtons. Okay, and then down here, I'll want to find the opposite, so I'm going to use sine, so Katoa, so so, uh, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so the force of gravity parallel, which is the opposite here, will be sine of the angle multiplied by the hypotenuse will give us the opposite side. Uh, so in this case, that'll be the sine of 35 multiplied by the hypotenuse, which is 735. So that's 422, 422.01 newtons, of course. Uh, so I've kind of unpacked all the forces of gravity on this object as it is on the hill. Then we need to know that, of course, the, if we're drawing it on the box itself, this is that... Uh, force of gravity, so 422.01. Uh, we know that because it's right at that magical point of just beginning that it is equal but opposite in direction to the force of friction, so actually we're, we're right at that balance point. Okay, so it's the same force acting back. Uh, you should also know that um, this, this skier isn't going into the mountain or flying off into outer space, so the force of normal is equal but 
opposite in direction to the uh, force of gravity perpendicular. So that is uh, 602.69. So that's kind of like, yay, I worked out all the forces, but I thought I was trying to solve for, for frictions, and you are. So now we have to go down and look at our friction formula, and we actually have force of friction static, because we're just, we haven't, we're not moving, we don't have an acceleration yet, we're just starting to move, um, will be the uh, coefficient of static friction multiplied by the normal force. Okay, I've told you that FF, that's this force vector over here, is this value. I've told you that FN is this value up here. You notice how we have both values already, so we can rearrange this just to be force of friction divided by the normal force will be the coefficient of static friction put in your numbers. So that is um, 422.01 divided by 602.69 equals the coefficient I believe I worked out was 0 .0 0 0.70 and there is no units for that. So the coefficient of static friction for this hill quite simply is 0.70. That's our final answer.